So today we are learning about Daniel, book number 27. So we haven't got halfway through the books yet because there's 66 books in the Bible. So we're only up to book 27. When we get up to book 33, then you'll know we've reached halfway. Okay. So here's the picture I found that somebody drew of what they thought Daniel would look like. So he looks like an old man in this photo because when he was in the lion's den, he was a bit older, wasn't he? So that's why he's here. He's praying to God here in the lion's den. We're going to learn about that a bit later on. Yeah, we just pay attention right now, Simon. We can talk a bit later. So Daniel is a very interesting book in the Bible. We might spend two weeks in Daniel just because there's so many interesting stories in Daniel that we can talk about. But first of all, we're going to talk about Daniel. Now this is not Daniel. This is somebody who's drawn a picture of King Nebuchadnezzar. So King Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon when Israel went into captivity. And Daniel was among those captives. So one of the stories in Daniel is King Nebuchadnezzar, one night, he has a dream. And then he wakes up from that dream after he has a dream and he's troubled, he's worried, he doesn't know what to think of that, the dream. In fact, he doesn't even remember what the dream was, but he was troubled by it. So this is what he saw, but he can't remember that he saw this. And you know what he says to all the wise men in his kingdom? He says, I had this dream and I, and I don't know and it's troubling me and I don't even remember what the dream was. So he says, you wise men, I want you to tell me what I dreamed and tell me what the dream meant. But because the wise men were, a lot of them were fake, right? They're just wise men of fake religions, fake gods. They, they said to the king, well, if you don't tell us what the dream is, what you saw, how are we going to interpret it for you? Right, so then the king was so angry, he said, you know what, I'm just going to kill all the wise men in the land. And Daniel was part of them. He was part of the wise men. So when Daniel and his friends heard about what the king was going to do, they're saying, like, why is the king so hasty? Why does he want to kill us all? And so it's because, because the king had this dream and he doesn't know what it was and he's saying that none of the wise men can tell it. So Daniel says, you know, secrets belong to the Lord, right? So Daniel says, hey, we can tell the king the dream and the interpretation thereof. And then Daniel goes and prays to ask God to reveal that to him. So Daniel goes to the king and explains to him what he saw in the dream. And you know what the king Nebuchadnezzar saw in the dream? He saw this big statue. Statue where the head was gold and the arms and chest were made of silver. This big statue. The middle part here was made of brass. The legs made of iron. And what were the feet made of? You can see here a bit of brass and a bit of clay. You know that one? Ah, oh, you know that one time. <laughs> so, and then he tells Nebuchadnezzar, that head is you, Nebuchadnezzar. So that's the Babylonian Empire. And then there's different empires throughout the ages that are going to come into play. And that's what these different medals represent on this statue. But one day, a rock cut out without any hands is going to come and it's going to smash this statue in the feet. And then it's going to fall down and then this rock is going to rule and reign forever. It's a stone cut out without hands. So what does that represent? In Daniel we're told these are the different kingdoms that are going to come after Nebuchadnezzar, but eventually Jesus Christ is the rock, isn't he? His kingdom is going to destroy all these kingdoms and it's going to stand forever. So that was one of the dreams that made Daniel very famous in the kingdom of Babylon. Now later on, when the king of the Perds, Persians and Medes came along, this is another story of Daniel. Daniel was a very wise man, a very godly man. And he would, you know, 
obviously pray to God and do the right things by God. But he had enemies. Because some people, because he was favoured by the king, a lot of people didn't like Daniel. So they tried to get Daniel in trouble. <laughs> Hello. They tried to get Daniel in trouble. This is what they said in Daniel 6.5. They said, Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion, what does this mean? A problem against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So one thing I say, Daniel was such a godly man and an upright man that they couldn't find any fault with Daniel. So he said, okay, well, the only thing we're going to find fault with Daniel, we find something about what he believes about God, then we can find fault. So let's read this together. This is our verse for today in Daniel. Daniel chapter 6, verse 5. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So this is later on in Daniel chapter 6, about halfway through now. So what did they do? They convinced the king at the time. Now we're not, no longer with King Nebuchadnezzar. Now we're with King Darius. He's the king of the Persians and the Medes. This is one of the different empires that was coming through of these four empires. So you know what these guys did that conspired against Daniel? They went to the king and said, King, you know, we should write a law that nobody can ask anything of any god except you. And then the king thought, hey, you know, he likes people worshipping him. So he says, hey, that's a, that's a good idea. So he made it a law. Nobody can ask any petitions of any other god. So when Daniel heard about this law, do you know what he did? Do you think he obeyed that law? No, he didn't obey that law because it's better to obey God rather than men. So Daniel, with his windows open, so everyone could see he wasn't hiding anything. He did the same thing he did every day. He prayed three times a day to God. So then the, his enemies said, Ah, now we've got him. He's broken the law. So whoever prayed to a God other than the king was thrown into where? The lion's den. The lion's den. That's right. So Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. And he was thrown in there for doing what was right. But because God was protecting him in the lion's den, what happened? The lions didn't want to eat Daniel. He stopped the mouths of those lions. So Daniel was inside the lion's den, but he was safe. Why? Because God was with him. So even though he was going to face this terrible punishment, he was saved from it because of God. And the king was so worried. Oh, throughout the night he couldn't sleep because he's like, oh, I can't believe I've thrown Daniel. Daniel's done something where he had to get thrown to the lions because the king liked Daniel. And then the next morning, after he couldn't sleep, he calls into the lion's den and he says, Daniel, was your God able to deliver you from the lions? And Daniel calls back and says he was able to. The king was relieved. And you know what? He was so angry with these people. You know what he did? He threw them into the lion's den. But it wasn't so good for these guys because this time God wasn't protecting them. And the lions got them. So, what do we learn from this story? These lions, this den, it kind of represents hell, doesn't it? You know, we all deserve hell. I mean, Daniel didn't deserve to go to hell, so that's where the analogy kind of stops. But if we, this represents hell, Daniel, because he was with God, he was saved from that punishment. But what about the enemies of God that do not believe? They do not get saved. So that's the picture we see from this story when it comes to Jesus. You see, we have a punishment to pay for, for our sin, hell. But if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, like Daniel, we will be spared from that punishment. But those who do not believe on Jesus Christ, what will happen to them? Terrible things. And we need to make sure we tell them to believe on Jesus Christ as opposed to not believe. Okay, so today 
we're going to play some games today because we're in this new hall. <laughs> so let's stand up, let's go to the back, and we'll get ready for some games.